Hello and welcome to the Miskatonic Playhouse and tonight's episode of Inside the Mind with Pete Burgess, who wrote Flesh Wounds. Hello, Pete. How are you? Hello. I'm good. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. Thank you very much. Well, Pete, uh, obviously, is one of us at the Playhouse. Pete, just remind everybody what it is that you do at the Playhouse. Uh, mainly video editor, but also, I guess, art director. I did the uh, branding and stuff at the start. I did a lot yeah. of the animations and things that you see, uh, and also the playbills. Yeah, I've been uh, telling anytime... everybody that I do this, so this is quite awkward. I've been oh, taking right. credit for all of this work. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> I know we're sharing the video edit and responsibilities now. So Cosmic and uh, Hedge are doing a brilliant job yeah, uh, as I'm about to step back a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so the playbills and any time anyone needs a thumbnail or anything like that, up to me. And um, obviously Pete is uh, plays in a fair amount of our games as well. And uh, also keepers for us. And we've got one of your games, uh, which I got to play, which was fantastic, um, on our Fringe channel. Is that right, Pete? Yeah, so just the one at the moment, which is The Haunting, which uh, you can find on our Fringe channel, uh, or if you're a friend of the Playhouse, you can access it as well. Uh, that's soon to be followed up uh, with uh, a sequel, which is going to be uh, Cat's Cradle, uh, which I'm really looking forward to run with the same characters as well, uh, yeah. plus one more, hopefully, and yeah. uh, maybe make it a bit of a trilogy, maybe a quadrology, is that the right word? A fifthmology, um, I think. Fifthmology, the... yeah. yeah. That's... Uh, but we've got there's there's a couple of sequels to The Haunting. Now we've got uh, the one by John Hook, and there's also the one by Evan Perlman as well, which we're hopefully going to explore in future. Definitely, uh, definitely I'm looking forward definitely. to that. Right, let's uh, let's cut to the chase, shall we? And ask you the questions that everybody wants to hear from this <laughs> Inside the Mind interview. We've got our usual questions uh, crew. So if you've listened to our previous Inside the Minds from our previous uh, Miskatonic repository authors after their scenarios, same questions, different answers, and this is how we get to know our community. So, Pete, question numero uno uh, is, what are you most proud of with your scenario? So this is Flesh Wounds. What are you most proud of? Um, Probably is that I got it finished, <laughs> to be totally <laughs> honest. And actually managed to get it out because there was a good time I didn't think I was going to. Um, but, yeah, I think it's been really well received, which has been really nice. And I've had some really lovely reviews for it on drive through by completely random strangers, which is it's great to know that they've taken it and it works. So I'm really you know, happy that it actually works for people. Um, uh, yeah, I think the story uh, maybe is a bit dense. Uh, it was a first try. It was uh, done in two halves uh, as part of the Storytelling Collective course. So it was actually the first one I've done. And I think there's a lot of lessons. Like, it was a learning uh, curve, I think. And I think there's a lot that I picked up that I maybe wouldn't do the next time. Uh, but hey, it's there. It's out there. It works. Uh, well, it's as I good mean, as it is, I go. think. <laughs> so if we're watching this on video, uh, this is this is Flesh Wounds here. You can see it's a print on demand. So it's a very successful scenario. Uh, and uh, I mean, I can say having run it as the keeper, uh, and I know I was a bit spoiled. I had Pete uh, on the other end of the phone so I could give him a call and have a chat. Um, but I, I would say... Um, I think it's really user friendly. I think it's really, you know, it's, it's it's a very lovely book. It's uh, it's got a very lovely style. Uh, it's very consistent. Um, you can even see I've still got some of my notes in there from when I ran it as well, <laughs> uh, covering up the amazing artwork. Um, but I, I I did think it was a very, you know, it was a very. It wasn't something that you pick up and you read it and you go, well, how do I do that? It's you know there is a there is a clear path. It's, it, it, it's linear, but there's also a few kind of lateral moments where you can spin off and and do what you want to put yourself back in later. Um, I think it was really good. I think it was really really clear for a first go. I think don't understand yourself, Pete. Yeah, Great no, work. thank you. Yeah, I, I think a lot of that came from the layout. I took a bit of time on just sort of making sure things worked really uh, that it read okay. You're right. You do pick up a lot of stuff and it feels a bit disjointed and a bit rushed, but I did take a bit of time on, on a few drafts to try and get it so that it did feel chronological yeah, uh, and as cohesive as, as possible. Um, yeah. So it's, uh, I think that's some of the feedback about it is that it's a, it's a bit much of a backstory. And I think I fell into that trap, which uh, I think Mike Mason always talks about is uh, don't write a novel and then have the investigators come in at the end. Yeah. Uh, I kind of wrote, maybe half a novel and then the best the idea was the investigators come into something midway yeah so yeah. they're coming into a situation which has a few moving parts to it um but that felt a bit more real to me as in like oh something's happened and they're suddenly on the scene i wanted them to be part of a situation that was already developing and if they didn't do anything it was complete inaction then it would all go to hell yeah i, I that, that was one of the things i kind of wanted to incorporate was inaction is going to be a problem 
you can't just not do anything. You have to do something to actually, you know. I think there is a sense a of result. You, you get that, you know. I mean, it starts uh, and spoiler alert. I imagine if you're listening or watching this inside the mind, you probably have watched our actual play or li- <laughs> excuse me, uh, listen to our actual play of Flesh Rune. So, um, without giving any spoilers, there is an, an inciting moment where, I mean, the 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 investigators walking across the college campus and a crazy person starts running at them or running at them chasing someone it does start with a bit of like a right quick what are you going to do act respond and and mm. you know that pace uh, i think can be you know carried through then from the keeper and from the investigators yeah i mean i wanted a bit of action to it anyway but i also wanted something that student characters uh you know they're just students what's their motivation to get involved in investigations well not much so i wanted something to just immediately sort of draw them yeah. in yeah. um i mean and it's also it's a reanimator sequel you've got to have a zombie in there got at least one so so that was a good i thought that was a good place to start it's like hey there's a there's a reanimated guy attacking you and then where's that come from what's happened there you know yeah, then yeah. the whole thing is like well what's what's actually happened to actually cause this and that that hopefully spirals the investigation there's a few little ins but that was yeah, so just leaning on that then Pete, because that's that's a really kind of really good setup for the scenario itself this our second question actually is um what would be your advice to future keepers of your scenario so we've kind of covered that there's that really quick um fast-paced setup which which kind of in a lovely way not in a not in an aggressive way forces the investigators to act to do something so they kind of get into their characters real quick and they get doing stuff mm. but what would, what would your advice be to future keepers who are going to be running their investigators through that yeah, there are a few NPCs in the game where it's it, they're obviously not who they appear to be. Um, and I think some keepers are going to play it and think, oh my God, well, if the players find out who this person is too early on, it's going to derail the whole thing. But don't worry about that because the idea is even if those NPCs do get rumbled, what are they going to do? You've got like, you know, three or four student characters uh, and it's their word against yours. How are you going to actually interact with that NPC? How are you going to, you can't, you know, are you going to kill them? Okay. Well, that's going to have some problems. Yeah. Uh, you know, report to police. Hmm, maybe they'll believe you. Maybe they won't. Different type um, of scenario. Exactly. And if you, if, but if you attack that NPC as well, I mean, all they're going to do is cry for help because everyone else is just going to think they are who they are. Um, so there's a whole thing in, in, in the um, uh, Dramatis Personae about the characters about how they will react if rumbled. Uh, at least I tried to get that into some of the traits, especially one main character. Uh, so I'd say don't worry too much if the players find out things too early, because really the challenge is what are they going to do once they do find out? What, what are they going to do uh, later on in the scenario when the shit really hits the fan? And that's all dependent on dice rolls, isn't it? I mean, without giving too much away, and like we said, if you're listening to this, if you haven't already listened to the scenario, go and listen to the our actual player Flesh Wounds and then listen to this, because obviously what we're saying relates to to that because this this is a following uh production uh but uh, pete you'll know because obviously i talked to you as i was running mine and in between sessions and things and i was kind of going oh god i've done something and, and they totally suspect so and so for, for this <laughs> and you were like it's cool just think yeah. do this and try this i was like yeah okay okay but we had some i mean we had uh charles uh howell and phaedra and they were charles our old pal Charles uh, from across the the the, the stretch of water. <laughs> Talk about suspicious. I think he I don't just think anything gets past Charles. Nothing yeah. gets Ch- past Charles. Charles suspects everything. Yeah, which yeah. is it's good. I mean, that's kind of what you want from this, not you. And it, I think, I think when you asked me, like, well, how do I deal with this situation? Because they're really onto this character. Yeah, I was yeah. like, well, that's fine. Her character really just will flip from one thing to the next. Maybe that's a bit of a challenge for the keeper because you've got to really lie your pants off really and on the fly but that's kind of what the character's like she, she yeah. will hop from one thing to the next and uh the way you did it in this scenario actually was was brilliant it was really believable the players believed it i'm not saying the characters believed it the players believed <laughs> yeah. it uh, and you really threw them off course and actually drove them through to that finale so that was really it was really great that seasoned players were yeah. second guessing themselves and i was like there we go we've done that right i would say as a keeper that was a really good fun thing to do as well because um, I, I think it would have. I think it was Hal who was playing Maggie, uh, if I remember correctly. Now, having having watched it back, um, it was Hal who was almost on a weekly basis going, "Ah, oh, now we now we're yeah we're totally chasing this person down, and they're just a normal person." Five minutes later, it was like they're the evil <laughs> mastermind of everything. Five minutes later, it's like 
they're just a normal person going for a coffee. And that yeah. I think that kind of flitting back in two was, was part of the fun. I think for me as the keeper and uh, for them as the investigators, not knowing who they could trust was, was part of the fun there. Yeah. So hopefully it works with seasoned players as well as newer players. I mean, newer players, far more simple. This person is not who they appear to be and there's the twist, but yeah, hopefully you know, you can keep them on their nice. feet a bit. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, jumping away from flesh runes just for a minute. Um, is there, a Miskatonic repository community scenario that you yourself would like to run? Uh, yeah, and I've not read it because that's I'm guilty of not buying a lot of scenarios and not reading them because I'm like, I'm really hoping that I can play with them first. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to happen for this one, but uh, Gatsby and the Great Race, uh, we've talked about a lot and on the Playhouse. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've not read it. I know it's a multi-keeper, multi-table game and the logistics of it are fascinating to me. Uh, and there's also a, a, an extra, uh, not table, but there's a space within, uh, is how uh, Mike was talking about it. Mike and Paul were talking about it at the UK Games Expo. So I'm really intrigued. And I want to, so I think I will, I'm going to read it soon and I'm going to try and figure out logistically in my head, how can this work as a webcast? How can this work as, yeah. uh, you know, a, an internet record? Because that's going to be an interesting one. Um, I can't wait to play in your game of Gatsby and the Great Race. Just <laughs> shotgun in my place now at that table, at one of the wanna, tables. It's going to be such. It's going to be such a collaborative effort, and I can't wait to see how we do it. If indeed it happens, it's it's going to be an interesting one. But I mean, either way, I'd love to be able to run that, even if it's in yeah. person in real life or or, or whatever. But there's yeah. there's um a few of our, um uh, MR. Uh, scenarios which uh, I've yet to read as well, which uh, look really interesting. In fact, there was one we played in on the weekend, which yeah. was Signal to Noise uh, by Colin Richards. I uh, had a brilliant time playing that at the Good Friends uh, convention, uh, which you were in as well. That was yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I need to read that fun. to see all the stuff that we missed. And we did <laughs> miss. We we missed <laughs> significantly. Yeah, and it was brilliant. So I can't wait to read that one back and then maybe run that for people. I think my my normal gaming group would, would love that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And a couple of new ones is the the overhead encounter by Jack Taylor, which I think's just been published. Yes, that looks yeah. interesting. Um, aliens and uh, X Files type almost tra traditional alieny kind of uh, spaceshipy kind of cover as well. It does give that X Files yeah. vibe, doesn't it? There's there's only a few things that like weird me out, and I think alien and abductions, and if it's like proper little grey aliens, they kind of freak me out a little bit. So I quite I'm really looking forward to that. And there's another one which was published, I think, a long time ago uh, by uh, Craig Pay called The Devil and the Drum, uh, which okay. is another scenario which uh, looks quite interesting. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. So as basically well. everything on the repository. Yeah. Yeah. Basically every single thing I will get to as soon as I've got the yeah. time. And yeah. that's the point of the playhouse. Eventually, <laughs> we will claw our way through everything on the on the repository. Um, uh, okay. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just, just. I mean, it's just great the amount of stuff yeah. that's out there. The amount, of, you know, all the stuff that people are publishing, are absolutely, it's just fantastic. I mean, and it is it's just really, so varied really good stuff as well. There is some yeah. amazing stuff out there, and it's it's also says a lot to um, Call of Cthulhu as a game as well that you can take this system, which is basically a horror game system, and just apply it to so many different areas, so many different yeah. settings, mix it up so much. Uh, that, yeah, it is my favorite RPG, and that's that's why. Yeah, without doubt, without doubt. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. So uh, thinking about all those wonderful uh, MR scenarios that are out there, you know, usually it's because, and I think this is something that we got from Signal to Noise when we played. There was some new cool stuff with it. I'm thinking about the digital handouts and things, but there was some new cool things. And there's always, whenever we're looking at writing a new scenario, we always kind of get this what's the new thing I'm going to do or try or explore or whatever. So my question to you, Pete, is uh, what would you like to explore in your next scenario? You see, I thought I had my next scenario down and I am going to finish it. But then when I played Signal to Noise, I was like, ah, oh, this guy's got loads of YouTube videos and they're really good. Yeah. And I was like, why didn't this I? This is Colin video Richards, or... by the way. Colin Richards, noise, yeah. Colin Richards. Fantastic scenario and like really good um uh, well, it's, it says it in the blurb. So signal intrusions. Um, and he has them as video clues, which is really clever. They're really well done. They're really yeah. moody and atmospheric. And it really sets up the scene. And I was just like, damn, I really want to do something like this. So I'll probably leave that a bit after the next one. But um, I really want to explore that and have a bit of a multimedia sort of approach to one yeah. of them. I think that'd be really challenging. Also, really it's really effective for atmosphere. I love, it's the immersion, which I like. Um, that's, yeah. that's what I like about the RPGs and it's just this extra element of immersion that really brings you in so that I'd really like to do something like that um, 
But my next one is going to be a few extra rules to Call of Cthulhu, which is going to be drinking rules. Um, so when I finally get finished, drinking responsible drinking rules with with warnings and and advice and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so drinking rules along with a new modern uh, era scenario to go along uh, with that. So a one shot short nice. scenario to go along with that. And I'm assuming I've got a place as an investigator in that as well. You do. I think actually I based a, four pregens on Miskatonic Playhouse staff, ah. which I think you noticed. Uh, so, but I mean, by the Brad Pitt type one is that the, the that's kind of right. the... Brad Pitt action hero type yeah. who's yeah. going to come in? I mean, I mean he, he, Brad Pitt he belongs type. in Pulp, but he's in normal Cthulhu. Same stats as Pulp, but it's just it's inexplicable. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, can roll with that. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> um, okay, uh, this is a question that that always I would say um, uh, sparks kind of thought, but I always I always think this is probably one of the mo- the, the 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 more interesting questions to hear from our authors uh, from. Um, where do you get your inspiration from? Oh wow! Okay, uh, oh, God, so many places. But I mean, you know, I grew up in the eighties and nineties, so it's mainly sort of eighties horror is my thing 70s and 80s horror is, is my big my bag so films mainly um but then sort of um early horror fiction i quite like as well uh, i'm really quite a fan of sort of more older horror fiction as opposed to sort of more modern stuff um give me an about? example what do you mean by i've got the... it right here i've got it right here actually because cool. i was reading it before um it like this was planned. so uh eleanor scott uh i've been reading uh her collection of well collection of stories um uh, Randall's round um a red and that sort of factors into the the scenario I'm writing at the moment a little bit a little little piece of it but um they're just brilliant moody atmospheric and uh they're, they're all based on her weird dreams and nightmares which I think is a really good way of, of coming up okay. with your story ideas because yeah there's so many of them I've jotted down of <laughs> terrible horrible nightmares <laughs> um which uh yeah just that's a really good way of getting your inspiration so it's great seeing all these stories all fleshed out like that um Obviously, H.P. Lovecraft, uh, uh, you know, Ramsey Campbell, all kind of those kind of authors. So I'm, I'm really like uh, read my short horror stories, really. Yeah. Like. Uh, but yeah, big, big on films, big on mm, yeah. any horror films, huge horror buff. So, yeah, mainly from there. And I'll just mix and match things. I was quite, um, I think that's probably advice to any writers who are thinking about writing a scenario. Like, I think I was always uh, worried about uh, being derivative of other stuff, but really everything's derivative of something else yeah. so don't worry about it you know what i mean anyone can take something and change it and make it fresh um good example of that straight off the bat would be um maybe that hannibal tv series by brian fuller oh, i love that absolutely yeah like mads mickelson uh yeah. superb uh, absolutely brilliant presentation but yeah brian fuller just he described that series as basically he's just remixing what thomas harris did yeah and probably for the better as well so it just yeah, it just shows how you can just take something and you just have to have a few tweaks or just like mm. change it a little bit and you've got something new. Uh, so just go for it. I mean, yeah, steal yeah. all the ideas you can and make it into something great. Well, I mean, there is the old, you know, the the, the old belief, you know, that there are no original stories anymore. Um, mm. and, and Mike Mason, uh, you know, the, the devil himself uh, is always talking about, I say always talking about, he, he's mentioned a few times, uh, to, I don't want to misquote him, uh, in different conventions, <laughs> yeah, whether it's been an MR con or, or you know, when we've seen him, um, uh, the UK Games Expo and things, he's always talking about, you know, d- 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 taking an idea and turning it on its head. So mm. there's nothing wrong with doing something incredibly familiar, uh, even if it mm. is a horror character or, or environment, but then turning it in a way that feels new. So um, I think that's that's actually a really you know clever way to look at it. And I think I'm like you, Pete, in the sense that you know, just you talking there about Hannibal, you know, you think about those wonderful '90s movies, you know, Silence of the Lambs, um, even the 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 one pre Anthony Hopkins, the the Red Dragon film, mm. uh, Manhunter, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, the, Manhunter by Michael Mann. Yeah, that was it. Oh yeah, it was Michael Mann, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, and like even though you know, even though it's not the same medium as this, I think that range of mediums as well, that getting stuck into different mediums gives us different areas to kind of take those influences from. Mm. Uh, and and then as you say you know you re you repatch them together in a different way and they create a completely different product in the end a different experience yeah. I, I think i even mentioned this in flesh runes as well i was i think at the end i said look just take this and and take it apart and stitch it together because your idea is going to be better than than mine 
Um, like it, it, I think that's the thing when you're writing a scenario is when I set out, I was like, well, people are going to have to play this and they're going to play it exactly as I say it, but that's never going to be the case. So don't worry too much because whatever you write, it's going to be torn apart and people are going to do their own thing and yeah. inject different things into it so that it fits their players or maybe the campaign that they're running or 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 maybe it's just not the right fit for their players so they've, they've upped the ante or they've maybe made it more low key so it's more yeah. sort of supernatural and atmospheric as opposed to all action i don't think anyone's going to write a scenario that's not going to be messed about with so don't worry too much about all the fine points and details because it's going to be changed by whoever's running it so just do what works for you and your group or or just for you um do a few play tests make sure it works and then and then just release it out there so that people can do what they want with it I birth think. into the world birth that horror yeah. into the world absolutely yeah. uh, pete you've actually given us already um you've already answered this final question a couple of times because you've already given um authors out there whether you're tried and tested whether you're brand new whether you're thinking about it you've already given lots of advice but i am going to ask you now just do you have any uh let's say as a final point do you have any uh, I, I suppose advice you know maybe you know you've talked about being a new author what about some of our hardened authors out there uh from the mr community um oh, anything you'd like to offer them I think, I think I'm probably the wrong person to offer advice to the hardened authors. Um, and I think any advice to the newer authors are already given. So that's a difficult question, actually. Um, <laughs> I think the, the one thing, actually, um, that I try to do in this scenario, and there's one thing that I don't want to say bothers me. I don't want to be negative, right? But I think there's, there's, a, there's a big thing in this game about uh, you have to give characters agency, right? And that's a big thing. You, players have to feel like they're important and involved in the story. I've seen a few scenarios where... And I've played in a few scenarios where basically you have agency right to the end and then something happens, like some um, catalyst or something else, and you get right to the climax. And at the climax, it cuts. And then it's like a cut scene for the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. And and you can't do anything. The keeper just sort of says, this is what happens, this is what happens, this is the end. And I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, I think if you're going to give players agency, it needs to be through the whole thing. And I tried to do that in this one where everyone's going to, you know, there's, there's a high chance that people are going to die horribly, but I wanted them all to die horribly on their own terms as opposed to, well, this happens and then you're all dead or whatever. So I think that's the thing. When, you, when you're writing a scenario, make sure that you give your players agency right to the end. They have a, they have a say in how they go out. Um, it's not just being, you know, it's not just like a big build up to be railroaded. Because um, I've I've only seen that a couple of times, but it does it does get to me because I'm like, oh, it gets to the sweet bit, and you're like, I want to do my hero move, and then it's suddenly, oh, we're out yeah. the door. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that's a so, really powerful thing to say, actually, because if you know, if there's one thing uh, uh, that, that that you hear from those, you know. Those people that you know in our community have a voice and they're speaking out and they're speaking on behalf of the community. The word agency is used so much, so don't mm. take that advice uh, lightheartedly. Uh, mm. Writers out there, uh, players out there, and keepers out there, keep that word very much close to your heart. Whether you're <laughs> writing, playing, whatever you're doing, because uh, the agency that's the fun part, that's the role playing part, that's the that's the I get to be valued and I've done something part. Um, mm. And I think. Uh, every now and then we're all probably a little bit guilty of going, oh, was that enough agency or, you know, something like that. So I think that's a really good uh, piece of advice. Um, Pete, we're going to say uh, thank you on that. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for giving up your time. Uh, oh, thank and, you. Um, I would say thank you for giving up your time for the Playhouse, but you're a part of the Playhouse. It's expected, Pete. <laughs> exactly, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, but, but uh, whilst I've got Pete here and whilst we've got you here, uh, I would like to say, you know, um, if you've got a scenario that you've written that you'd like the Playhouse to be able to 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 play, to have a look at doing as an actual play, whether it's our main feed, whether it's our, our fantastic matinee, whether it's our fringe feed, uh, do send it to us. Send us, you know, get in touch with us on our, on our email address, which is miskatonicplayhouse at gmail.com. You can always find us uh, on the socials. If you type in Miskatonic Playhouse, we're going to pop up somewhere or even on threads now. Um, but the, the main place where we all kind of hang out and chat, and we've got quite a large community there now, is on our Discord, um, which you can find through our various links. So if you want to get it to us, find us on Discord and we'll have a proper chat there. The last thing is, is obviously everything that we're doing, all of the video editing, sound editing, everything that we do um, obviously takes time and with that comes a little bit of money so if you like what we're doing and you'd like to support us uh you can uh with uh coffee 
um, which is our uh, which is our uh, kind of network that we use to raise a bit of money and kind of put it back into the playhouse. So you can find us there at co- uh, it's coffee.com forward slash Miskatonic Playhouse. That's K O dash F I dot com forward slash miskatonic playhouse uh, and people on there you can sponsor us for as little as a pound and i can tell you that it does go a long way towards what we want to do in the future how we want to present ourselves at conventions but also just bringing the playhouse into the the kind of the bigger community and doing yeah. more work with more authors and and there's so much content on there already oh. Yeah. So just for that one pound, like you get access to some brilliant plays. Honestly, oh, and that's our fringe. Yeah, yeah there's so many kind of uh, uh, yeah. uh, scenarios recorded on there that you'd be able to access just for one pound. Um, so check them out. Let us know if you enjoy it. Let us know what you want us to do uh, as an actual play. That's always quite an interesting one when people get in touch and they're like, "Hey, can you do this one?" Um, so yeah, thank you very much for listening, Pete. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And um, yeah, we'll say good night. Take care, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and support us on Coffee. That's ko-fi.com forward slash Miskatonic Playhouse, where you can access exclusive shows and content for as little as one pound.